Hey what is going on guys, it's me JD Studios and I'm back with another video. Now today I have set 75171 Battle on Scarif. This was a set that I really wanted when they first showed images and then I was like I'm never touching this set because it was released at £55 with only 410 pieces around about I think. So I just thought I was getting completely screwed over at that price. So um, I recently got saw an offer on Amazon for this set for only £32 which is below what I would expect it to retail what I expect it to retail for and I'm really happy with the set at £32 I think it's a very nice very reasonable price £55 less so so let's get into it starting off with the four minifigures starting off the minifigures we have Cassian Andor and this is by far my favourite version of Cassian that we've got. We've only had two, but he just looks so much nicer with the brown jacket on instead of the blue that he had in the U-Wing, even though that was accurate to the set. This is a really nice looking minifigure with the printing on the legs and the jacket, which can be reused easily for any other minifigure that you really want, including custom ones. There's a look at the back. It also has the... Um, I think for the time at least, this new metallic grey blaster. I like the fact that we still get blasters in the mainline sets, even if we don't get them in the battle packs. And this is no exception, and it looks really awesome. I love the bird and all of it. So let's move on to the next Probably one. the highlight of the set for me, in terms of minifigures, is the Jin Erso minifigure. I really like this minifigure for a number of reasons, but the main reason being we actually get a hairpiece for Jin. Also, we do get the Imperial Ground Crew minifigure torso and printing. So if we spin it back, it is the same printing that we got on the other one in the TIE Striker. But they even have the decency to include the helmet, which a lot of the time you don't get. For example, Sabine Wren, you never, they never actually include the helmet or the hairpiece in the same set but this is really cool that they've included the hairpiece and it is great for adding to the Jin minifigure that you already get the U-Wing which does not actually include a hairpiece it's moulded on so you can just swap that over onto that one and it just looks so much nicer with the actual hairpiece and you do get the outfit in another set but this is still a great one and it's really accurate to the main scene itself where this comes from Let's move on to the Shore now, Troopers now. Another awesome feature of the set is we get two of these beautiful looking Shore Troopers. They are um, a bit different from the ones we got on the TIE Striker. Mostly with the printing on the torso. The helmets are exactly the same as far as I can tell. As you can see here, here's a comparison. The helmets are identical. However, the torso prints are very, very different as you can see. They do still have the generic clone trooper head, if I swap it around, and they do get given the same gun, but it's very, very different torso and leg printing, and I really like this version. It looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, but this one is also very detailed, as you can see, but I'm not going to go to the other one because this review is about these minifigures because it's in the right set. So now let's move on to the main okay, build. Okay, so now we've got the main build. It's sort of a landing pad. It looks pretty cool, the landing pad, I have to say. Well, if it is a landing pad, I'm not really 100% sure what LEGO is going for here. But it's still a fairly cool looking build, as you can see. Here's some sort of an overview at an angle. It's looking really good. It's quite wide, so I can't fit all of it into the camera angle, I don't think. If I push it back a bit more, I can fit more in it, but anyway. So starting off, we have this control panel area, and let's get a better look of it by flipping over these switches, and we can actually pull the whole thing out, which reveals, as you can see, a cool little place to store blasters and grenades. You get extra blasters and stuff, which is really appreciated for the fans that hate the sprint um, stud shooters. So there's a look of the control panel, it's looking really nice. I think I put it upside down, but it doesn't really matter. And you can just take your Jinner so minifigure, or if you have a Chirrut, and just pop them at the control panel like that. And then it just slides back in like so. Sorry about the noise, by the way. 
and we flip those switches on each side and it stays in. It doesn't really move around a lot. It's really nice. It, like they blend it in fairly nice. There's a bit of black and light grey that kind of it ruins the overall effect, but not too much. I don't think really. Now, if we look onto the main area, as you can see, there's loads and loads of sticker detailing. It's a pain to put on. I hate putting stickers on, but it still looks great. I have to say, even though stickers are annoying to put on, it does look really, really nice on this particular set. Now, let's move aside the crate because I want to show you possibly one of the most interesting and fun functions of this set, which is these buttons here. So if you press down hard enough, they'll kind of like pop up and underneath is a single grenade, if my camera will focus, there we go, and it's a bit exposed but it still looks fairly decent and let's try that again. So if you just press it down, you don't even need to push it with a lot of power. You just need to press it down and it will pop up really nice and high. Now looking closer into the main hatch, as you can see you've got two sliding doors, but you've also got some sticker detailing here and here, which looks pretty cool even if it's a pain to put on, which you'll probably hear me say a lot because there is a fairly decent bit of stickers. Now if we turn it around, you can see some more sticker detailing on the inside of the panel on both sides as you can see there but you've also got a cool little control panel there and you can take your Shaw Troopers blaster and put it on this clip here and it's on both sides but we also get an exclusive printed tile here which is the Death Star planned tile. So this is the second time this has actually been released in a set. You also get in the droid skate pod, but it's nice to get in the set and it's such a very nice looking piece. I think Lego's done a very good job of representing some of the main features of the base, even without including it at the scale it was in the film. Now, the last feature that I haven't shown you is the actual sliding door function. Now, this is a really annoying function um, because in order for you to actually open it, you have to pull this down before you can slide the doors open and it's a bit iffy on getting the doors to actually come out. You kind of have to like push it from here. It does open fairly nicely but there's also a huge drop off as you can see if we put the minifigure down there. You can see it's quite a considerable drop off between the actual bit here and down there which is quite annoying I have to say but it's not the end of the world now in order to actually close them up you can just do that but you can't like leave the doors open and then flip this back up because it just gets in the way now some last details to go over is you've got some palm trees as you can see they're really really nice palm trees I have to say Lego's done an excellent job designing that palm tree and you've also got some simple but nicely designed foliage and this little I'm not sure what it is but it looks kinda cool now the last thing is separate to the main set which is the crate now this doesn't come with a small blaster pistol you'll get in the Imperial hover tank sets but it's really nice to get another one of these so if you have a hover tank now you can actually have two on them I've got three hover tanks so now I can have two hover tanks with two on each and then one without and I can just put troopers on that which is really really cool okay so now let's go on to the final thoughts okay guys so the final thoughts on this set um, this is actually retiring it from Lego stores I remember not long ago it was about I think about half price on Lego shop at home the UK and about the US but this set is retiring soon in the UK um, at least on lego.com I think in stores like Amazon, Argos, things like that they'll stay a little bit longer but this is retiring soon um, and for £55 you, I would strongly recommend you avoid it at all costs £55 is just not worth it you're not getting your money's worth it's a great great set but not a £55 set for this size it is fairly big, 
but it's just not your money's worth. I would wait and find another set that is cheaper maybe, or wait for the set to go on discount. It wasn't that long ago that it was on discount on Amazon, so maybe wait a bit longer and it might go on discount again before they stop selling it. Um, now in the US, I'm not 100% sure what the price was. I feel like it was $50 maybe, which is, I mean the US isn't, you get, more varied prices so I wouldn't I would say that if you live in the US and you haven't picked the setup I strongly recommend picking it up but if you live in the UK I wouldn't recommend it unless you can get on discount but anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed this review please leave a like if you did comment subscribe check out some of my other videos like the solo Star Wars story set analysis um, links will all be at the end of the video and I'll see you guys next time